Chapter 2 is about the fundamentals of data and signals. The objectives of this chapter is after reading this chapter, you'll be able you should be able to distinguish between data and signals and side advantages of data of digital data and signals over analog data and signals. So we have the digital data and signals and analog data and signals. Identify the three basic components of a signal. Discuss the bandwidth of a signal and how it relates to the to the to data transfer speed, or as they call it data transfer rate. Identify signal strength and attenuation and how they are related. Strength and attenuation. Outline the basic characteristics of transmitting analog data with analog signals, digital data with square wave digital signal, digital data with discrete analog signals, analog data with digital signals. List and draw diagrams of the basic digital encoding techniques and explain the advantages and disadvantages of each. Identify the different shift keying modulation techniques. PSK, ASK, and all these. And describe QSK, QSK and describe the, their advantages and disadvantages and uses. Identify the two most common digitization techniques and describe their advantages and disadvantages. Identify the different data codes and how they are used in communication systems. Introduction. And here is an introduction. And because we have analog and digital signals, then we have analog data to analog signal, digital data, square wave digital signal, digital data to a discrete analog signal, analog data to a digital signal for combinations. Okay. In order for computer network to transmit data, the data must first convert it into the appropriate signals. Okay for combinations as this the data the signal okay this is analog this is analog this is digital this is digital this is digital this is analog this is analog this is digital so when analog to analog they call am modulation and fm modulation when digital to digital they call it nrz nrz l nrzi manchester different Differential Manchester, bipolar AMI, and it works in digital encoders, and this is in local area networks and telephone systems, digital to digital. And the digital to analog is the amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying. This is digital to analog, converting digital to analog. And the analog to digital, it's the pulse code modulation PCM and the Delta modulation and this is in the telephone systems and the music systems analog to digital and the digital to analog in the in the uh, dial up or DSL or cable modems or TV broadcasts okay for combinations of data signals So we have digital and analog, either data or a signal, and each one can be analog or digital, and that's for for different combinations. All right, digitization. What is the digitization? 
converting analog data to digital signal is generally called digitization. So it's analog to digital conversion they call digitization. Data and signals. Data is entities that convey meaning within a computer or computer system. All right. Signals are electronic or electromagnetic impulses used to encode and transmit data. Analog versus digital. This is analog. This is digital. And this is digital with noise. So we have, if we go back a little bit, we have analog and analog with noise, and we have digital and digital with noise. This is analog. This is analog with noise. And this is digital. And this is digital with noise. All right. Fundamentals of signals. The amplitude. The amplitude. A signal with two different amplitudes is the height of the wave above or below a given reference point. Frequency. What is the period? Its period. The length or time interval of one time cycle is called its period. Three signals of A, one hertz, two hertz, and three hertz. You see in one hertz, it's one full wavelength in a second. In two hertz, it's like two in a second. In three hertz, three in a second. Spectrum. What is the spectrum? The range of frequencies that the signal span from minimum to maximum is called spectrum. The bandwidth of a signal is the absolute value of the differences between the lowest and the highest frequencies, the bandwidth. bandwidth. Effective bandwidth that is less than the bandwidth because of extraneous, extraneous noise degrades original signals, an electronic device usually has an effective bandwidth that is less than its bandwidth. Because of the external noise, the effective bandwidth is different, is smaller, lower than the real bandwidth, the written bandwidth. The phase of a signal is the position of the waveform relative to a given moment of time, or relative to time zero. This is the phase. So this, these have, these have different phases, 180 degree difference, which is the maximum. This is like half the way different phases, 90 degree phase. So a sine wave showing no phase change, didn't change any phase. 180 degree phase change, change the phase here. A 90 degree phase change, phase, have a small phase change here. When traveling through any type of medium, a signal always experiences some loss of its power due to friction. And this is called Attenuation, the loss of power, loss of signal. Signal strength is called attenuation. Decibel is a relative measure of a signal loss or gain, and it's, it is used to measure the logarithmic loss or gain of a signal. Amplification, amplifi amplifying, amplification is the opposite of attenuation. Minus 10, 
plus 20, is 10 minus 15 is minus 5 decibel composite signals so this signal with this signal can be composite and we have this composite signals all right example demonstrating decibel loss and gain so we have the loss on gain here and the decibel is 10 times the log of the ratio relative measure of the signal loss gain or gain as expressed by this so you take 10 log you get the decibel Converting data into signals. And transmitting analog data with analog signals called modulation. Transmitting analog data with analog signals. just like AM and FM. Transmitting digital data with digital, with square wave digital signals, digital encoding schemes, digital to digital. To transmit digital data using square wave digital signal that ones and zeros of the digital must be converted to the proper physical form that can be transmitted over a wire or an airwave. Thus, if you have to transmit to transmit a data value of one, you could do this by transmitting a positive voltage or a medium. If you wish to transmit a data of zero, you could transmit zero voltage. You could also use the opposite scheme. This is an example of five digital encoding schemes. All right. So the first one is the NRZL, NRZI, and Manchester encoding, and differential Manchester, and bipolar AMI. And each one is described really briefly here. Transmitting signal data with discrete analog signals. Transmitting digital, sorry, digital data with discrete analog. So we have digital data and we want to transmit them on analog signals. Well, now we use the Amplitude shift keying or phase shift keying, just like that. Frequency shift keying. Transmitting analog data with digital signals. So now we have to do the pulse code modulation. The common is analog, and we convert them to digital and save them or, or transmit them. And we have pulse code modulation and pulse amplitude modulation and the here it shows example of taking snapshot of analog waveform conversion to digital signal All right reconstruction 
a more accurate reconstruction. And here we have the delta modulation. Example of delta modulation that experiencing slop overload noise and quantizing noise. Experiencing slope overload. It goes sharper. All right. And quantizing noise. It's steady, but it shows not steady. All right. Data codes. One of the most common forms of data transmitted between a transmitter and a receiver is textual data. For example, banking institutions that wish to transfer money often transmit textual information, such as account numbers, names of bank owners, bank names, addresses, and the amount of money to be transferred. This textual information is transmitted in a sequence of characteristics. Data codes. Relationship between frequency and bit per second. Frequency and bit per second. Right. And the codes, one of them is the EPSIDIC code, data code, and it's called Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code, EPSIDIC, is an 8-bit code allowing 256 possible combination of textual symbols. These 256 combination of textual symbols also included all uppercase and lowercase letters. And here is the code set. All right. For example, if you want a computer to send a message transfer 120 1200 using a the following characters may be sent transfer t transfer space dollar sign one two zero zero and this is the dot then this is the zero zero And the ASCII code is used in the C language. And here's the ASCII table, or the ASCII character code set. <coughs> and the Unicode, one of the major problems with both EPSIDIC and ASCII is they cannot represent symbols other than found in English language. Furthermore, they cannot even represent all the different types of symbols in the English language, such as many of technical symbols Okay, so for this, we need a more powerful encoding technique called Unicode. Unicode is an encoding technique that provides a unique coding value for every character in every language, no matter what platform. So it's the universal, Unicode, universal code. And here we have the www.unicode.org. So if we would like to write the same thing in the Unicode, but now the difference is it, it's, it's right. It became, it takes more space, but now we can write it in any different, in any other language. All right. The data and signal conversion on action. Two examples, HANA using microcomputer, operating over a LAN, then a modem, then the internet, all right. The first three letters, all right. And the frequency modulated for the letter S. So this is the letter X, S, and it's modulated. This is the voltage, right? Using simple frequency shift keying, simple PSK or FSK. 
transmitted. And here is the chapter summary. Data and signals, this is the first thing. All signals consist of three basic components, amplitude, frequency, and phase. Two important factors. Let's read the summary word by word. Okay, the chapter summary. Data and signals are two basic building blocks of computer networks. All data transmitted over any communication medium is either digital or analog. Digital data is transmitted with a single, with a, with a signal that like data can be either digital or analog. The most important differences between analog and digital signals is that it's easier to remove noise from digital and signals are from analog and signal uh, from digital data and signals than and signals than from digital from analog data and signals. All signals consist of three basic components and we read that already data the two important factors affecting the transfer of a strength of our, uh, over a medium are noise and attenuation because both data and signals can be either digital or analog four basic combinations of data and signals are possible analog data converted to an analog signal digital data converted to a square wave digital signal digital data converted to a discrete analog signal and analog data converted to a digital signal to transmit analog data over an analog signal the analog waveform of the combined with another analog waveform in a process known as modulation. To transmit analog data over analog signal, the analog waveform of the carrier combined with another analog waveform or of the data, right, is combined with another analog waveform called a carrier in a process known as modulation. Digital data carried by square wave digital signal is represented by digital encoding formats including manchester encoding scheme manchester codes always have the transmission in the middle of the bit when which receives synchronous itself and with the incoming signal for digital data to be transmitted using discrete analog form, the digital data must be first undergo, undergo a process called shift keying. The three basic techniques of shift keying are amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying. Two common techniques for converting analog data so that it may be carried over digital signals are pulse code modulation pcm or delta modulation analog over digital all right that's pcm or delta modulation pulse code modulation converts sample of the analog data to multiple bit digital values delta modulation tracks analog data and transmits Oh, only a one or zero delta modulation all right depending on whether the data rise or falls within the next period and they have the slope we have a uh, issues and representing the noise or the slope and one of the figures that we pass through shows that digital data codes sorry data codes are necessary to transmit the letters numbers symbols and control characters found in text data three important text data codes are ascii code epsidic code and unicode and here it's written the key terms are like this A review questions are important if i want to test you i'll bring you one of these questions and you have to be able to answer it exercise and thinking of the of uh, outside the box as uh, as another nominated test questions all right 
thinking outside the box. You are working for a company that has a network application for accessing a database of corporate profiles. From your computer workstation, a request for a profile travel, travels over the corporate local area network to a modem. The modem uses DSL. Connect to the internet and finally to the database. The database service is essentially a modern and mainframe computer, a modem and a mainframe computer. Create a table or draw a figure that shows every time data or signals are converted to a different form in this process. For each entry in the table, show where the conversion is taking place, the form of incoming information and the form of outgoing information show the conversion all right that's thinking outside the box and telephone system are designed to transfer voice signals when a voice signal is digitized using pcm what is the sampling rate and how many quantization level are used how much data does the that generates in one second are these same sampling rates and quantization levels are used in on cd can you verify your answer oh this is a very good question in fact the thinking outside the box question third question if a telephone line can carry a signal with a baud rate of six thousand and we want to transmit data at 333,000 or 333,600 bits per second. How many different signal levels will be necessary? Is this how at 33,600 bits per second modem operates? that's another question and we have three more questions fourth fifth and sixth question which is very long and then we have hands-on projects then we'll go to the next chapter which is chapter three